we almost didn't make this video. We were almost no. thought, you know, it's disrespectful to film too much. We don't want to go too deep into it. As it started to get dark, I think that's when everyone sort of noticed that there were flashing lights, there was a huge police presence. It felt really airy and scary and that's also the point in the night where people started to get messages from family asking oh, yeah. if they if they were safe if they were okay we've absolutely loved showing off turkey and this isn't the end of our turkey series but we mentioned in our last video that uh this trip was really special to us for a particular reason so as much as the hot air ballooning that we finally got to do, oh, which so we're, we're stoked about. As much as the hot air ballooning was a bucket list experience, there was something else on this tour, which is why we took this specific trip, that was a bucket list for us and for, more so for Australians and New mm. Zealanders as well. Yeah, so the reason that we took this tour was actually Anzac Day, and we'll explain a little bit more about what that is soon. But basically what that meant was that we slept on the shores of Gallipoli. It meant that we were sleeping outside in the cold in sleeping bags <laughs> on a weird kind of incline sliding down the hill. Thousands of other people around. And um, to be honest, there were some genuine sort of safety concerns. Everyone mm. around us felt it. And that's the reason that we wanted to sit down and actually make this video to kind of explain what that felt like yeah it was it was intense and so yeah that's the reason we've decided to to sit down and chat to you guys about it so we won't go deep into the history but to give some context if you've not heard of anzac or anzac go ahead sorry siri <laughs> it's all good no i siri jumped in there if you haven't heard of anzac or anzac day so it's a day of remembrance in new zealand and australia for uh soldiers that fought in world war one and landed in Gallipoli. And so ANZAC stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. So it's actually a public holiday for us back home and it's a chance for people to go and attend, uh, wake up early in the morning and attend dawn services. And the most legit one of them all mm. is obviously at ANZAC Cove in Gallipoli because that's where the soldiers first landed, it's where New Zealand and Australia had the most casualties and it's also where we slept for the night. Well, <laughs> well we slept. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to sleep. So that is the context, but this is where things started to get really, really interested and interesting and, and quite scary. So in the afternoon, we jumped on a bus, we drove out to Gallipoli, and we joined this, this queue of what felt like maybe 20 other buses lining up to go inside for the events. It felt like forever that we were on this bus. So we arrived in the afternoon and then the sun started going down and as it started to get dark, I think that's when everyone sort of noticed that there were flashing lights, there was a huge police presence. It felt really airy and scary. And that's also the point in the night where people started to get messages from family asking oh, yeah. if they if they were safe, if they were okay. Yeah. There was just this huge feeling of just fear, anxiety, tension. And the reason that we were getting messages from family is because they'd seen these news reports about someone who had been arrested in connection with a plan to kind of that would have basically put us all in danger at this event. So the the fear was high. Mm, maybe we shouldn't have done this, but we all started <laughs> we to get should. very interested and wanted some context ourselves as to what was going on. And so somebody said on this bus, do you want me to read this article? So we all sat in silence and we listened as somebody read out what had been published about this person and the, the threat basically. Yeah. And then everyone just, sat there in silence people started comforting each other everyone was just we were all on edge we we're like this we were on the edge of our seats and nobody yeah. really felt comfortable people were holding hands and yeah it was scary but then someone from the new zealand army jumped on the bus took the microphone and explained to us what was going to happen he said that there was going to be four security checkpoints and each one was going to get more intense than the last so that kind of put our, our minds at ease it a little bit did. knowing that there was you know the Australian and New Zealand army there they were there to keep us safe and they were proud of us for being there too yeah and it was with the Kiwi accent which we now know <laughs> is has been rated as the most sexy oh, yeah. accent in the world that's got to be an error that's <laughs> The fourth checkpoint was airport style screening. There was a full pat down. You couldn't have liquids over 100 mils. Males and females separated, separated. as well. Uh, and then we had got through and we were waiting for the last person in our group to get through and all of a sudden you just hear this <laughs> And the power 
to only the security section mm. went out and my mind just started racing. I was like, I why is tell. this happening? I was, I was in panic mode. By Everyone was point. really suspicious. And when I say I can tell, it was not because I could see you because it was pitch black. Pitch so black. instantly I'm like, cell phone out, get the, get the torch on, make people feel yeah, you did well. somewhat comfortable. And then somebody pointed out flashing lights in the sky. And so we look up and we were not experts. I mean, I fly a drone and I know what it should sound like. This one did not sound like that at all. No. It was almost completely silent with flashing lights. And we think it was an infrared drone flying above, surveying the area. So we sort of felt... That made me feel a little yeah, bit better that was, they're taking it very seriously. Yeah, it was an absolute emotional roller coaster. But this, to the credit of the security staff there, like Dane said, they did. They were taking it really seriously, and they weren't letting anyone else through. Mm. I feel like if they did let people through, I would have been like, see. Ya. Yeah, yeah, get us out there. And that was about twenty minutes for standing in the dark, and then it came back on, and we were like. Okay, let's move on yeah. together and go and see where we're going to be camping, sleeping, and sort of the next the next part of it. About 11, 11.30ish that we finally got through all of the security and there were still hundreds or thousands, thousands probably of people that were behind us from the other buses that had since shown up as well. And we went into, I don't really know, we didn't really know what to expect. We thought it was going no. to be, I thought it was going to be flatter, more of a campsite so situation, I. but it's essentially just grass on an incline surrounding a, sta a stand, a stage, and yeah. sort of the, yeah, the stage area. And we get our sleeping bags out, start kind of sliding oh. down the hill. At this point I think we got out some food, some snacks, which we had to buy the day before. These are our snacks for the night. A couple of bananas, yeah, some Maybe rando some bread things that we don't really know what they are. <laughs> some apricots, some extremely overpriced but delicious looking cashews, and a couple of sneaky bars. There yeah. was food and coffee there, That's but right, the queues yeah. got quite long, which is always sort of the case. So then we sat down anyway, or we got into our sleeping bags, and by about midnight, everyone started to settle a little bit, and it was freezing. <laughs> it was so cold. We were we thought we were prepared. We were pretty well prepared, mm. but I could not I could not. This feel. portion of my face was not, <laughs> and you might hear I've, I've got a bit of a cold because of yeah. I think because of this whole experience maybe as well. At about 5 a.m., that's when everyone started to wake up. We started they to wake up. Well, not yeah. I mean, I was awake the entire night, but that's when the movement started happening. Uh, sleeping bags got packed away, and everyone sort of stood up for the dawn service. And we didn't actually record the service mm. itself, just out of respect. It didn't feel right to kind of have a big camera up and not really be paying attention. We wanted to be completely present. So the service is is, uh, is about an hour and it's, it's speeches, it's... Um, National anthem. Yeah, there were Turkish representatives there because it is a really tight relationship between the three countries that we've yeah. talked about and the other allies that were there as well. And also laying of wreaths is a big thing too. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of songs and everything as well. It is all very, it's a very special mm. hour. And then this is when everybody separates at that point into the Australian an additional ceremony, an Australian specific one and New Zealand specific one. We weren't really, we were prepared, but... Yeah, we knew, we'd been told that there would be a bit of a walk, a bit of a hike to the New Zealand uh, ceremony, but we did not expect it to be a seven kilometre uphill, uphill battle. battle. We had all our gear, it was cold and then it was hot and it was, it was a long walk, it was huge. Yeah, and then there was just windy, dirty roads and but it was it was great it gave us a chance to walk around see more of the sites and everything that were there as well and this all might be sounding really intense and um it was to be yeah, fair it, it was it, really it, intense but we've both obviously like talked about it since and it's something that we wouldn't trade it was an incredible experience and we're so glad that, and grateful that we got to do it definitely Fears and concerns aside, we are we're really happy that we decided to do this on a tour. It just yeah. it took all the stress and all the pressure away from us. I don't think that we could have organised that on our own. No, anyway. it would have been really difficult. And I have seen as well that a lot of the tours that go that are around Turkey actually stop off at Gallipoli. If yeah. you're an Australian or a New Zealander, uh, regardless of the time of year, by the way, if you're if you're a Kiwi or an Aussie, then obviously it's going to have a lot more significance to you. Mm. But sort of hope that this has added some context that if you're interested in taking a trip like that um you would understand a yeah little, a and, little bit more and just on like a pure travel level yeah. as well gallipoli and that whole area is beautiful so we would highly recommend that you you know you go there and you experience it realize that this one is a lot is a lot deeper if you're not going to gallipoli if you're not an aussie or kiwi and you're just watching our experience i hope it's still been really interesting for yeah. you this is a, a sidestep and then we're back to back to normality after this one but it's just such a special occasion for us and with the security concerns and everything mm -hmm. 
uh, we almost didn't make this video. We were almost yeah. thought, you know, it's disrespectful to film too much. We don't want to go too deep into it, but it was one of those things that we keep thinking about and replaying that yeah. we were like, we have to sit have down to do and we have to just share what was, uh, yeah, scary, emotional, but so fulfilling. So but, all of the but feelings. <laughs> but anyway, the next video is us back in Istanbul. This time we're going to be exploring the the European side. That doesn't go to plan. No, no, no uh, but nothing ever does, right? No, so we, that's we, travel. We have to make the most of it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the comments. Bye. Bye.